around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Tommy's all yours. And yeah, we'll take good care of him for you. My gracious, Mr. Dillon, look at that clutch of keys. He sure does use a lot more than we do back home. Yeah. Well, they always did things up fancy in Wichita. Isn't that right, Tom? Yeah. There's a lot of people who wouldn't agree with you. They're going to buy you two a drink. Well, say, now, that's mighty nice. No, thanks, Tom. Not right now. I got half the trail dust from here to Dodge on me. What I need is a bath and some sleep. I'm heading for the hotel. Sure, Matt. I'll catch up with you before you head back. Come to think of it, I guess I could stand and take a bath, too. <laughs> Come to think of it, you could. Uh, I'll see you at the trial tomorrow. Yeah, good night, Tom. Good night, Tom. Mr. Bagley. Good night, boy. Well, I guess you're right about going to the hotel, Mr. Dillon. I sure will be proud to get these boots off. Yeah, it's been a long ride. Seems to me like they'd ought to pay extra for it, too. For what? Well, for doing all that traveling harness to a prisoner. You sure don't get a chance to enjoy the countryside much. Well, there isn't much countryside around here to enjoy. Well, that's true. Excuse but even me, so, gentlemen. Mr. Dillon, I... You, uh, want to talk to me? I believe so, sir. I believe so. If I'm not mistaken, you are the marshal from Dodge City. You're not mistaken. Matt Dillon, what can I do for you? I'm pleased to hear you offer your services, Marshal. I keep writing the folks back home, and some Yankees are gentlemen, but I swear I don't think they believe it. Look, mister, you're keeping me from a hot bath. You've got something on your mind. You speak it out, huh? My name's Clayt Morley. At your service. Well, Mr. Dillon, ain't that those... Ain't I that... thought you'd recognize the name. I just brought a man named Reed Morley in from Dodge. Are you related? He's my brother, Marshal, my younger brother. Oh, uh -huh. He's in bad trouble. I'm bound to agree with that. I left him at the jail, Marley, if you want to see him. Oh, I'm not wanting to see him, Marshal. Not tonight. I want you to get him released for me. The boy's being held for murder. Brother Reed didn't do that thing. I didn't arrest him without a reason. Nobody with the name of Morley would kill a woman, Marshal. Your brother will be tried. He'll have his say. You'll be testifying, won't you? Yeah, I'll be testifying. Your words could have a powerful effect, one way or another. I'll be telling what I know. I think maybe you ought to know something else, Marshal. What's that? I think maybe you ought to know that if this stain on the family name isn't removed, if Brother Reed doesn't walk out of that courthouse a free man, you won't live to see him hung, Marshal Dillon. What? Don't threaten me, Marley. Why, I'm not threatening you, Marshal. This is just a simple appeal to your sense of justice and honor, that's all. A sense with which I know you are highly endowed. Good evening, gentlemen. Well, now just what did you think of that? Not much, Chester. Come on, let's get some sleep. place we're staying at ain't one bit better than a Dodge house. Not much to choose from, I guess. 
And that smart alecky clerk don't have no right to go putting on airs, though. He been bothering you? Oh, well, he ain't done nothing, but he acts like anybody from Dodge City come right out of a hole in the prairie. <laughs> he must have seen us when we came in last night. Well, yes, I know, but I got cleaned up as nice as I could. Never mind, Chester. Just eat your dinner. And and that's nothing, Mr. Jones. This piece of beefsteak just ain't worth the fat to fry it in. Oh? You haven't had much trouble eating it. Well, no, sir, I was hungry. But I'll tell you something. Back at Delmonico's, they really know how to fry up a piece of meat. That's not the way you talk back in Dodge, Chester. Yes, sir, and I've been thinking about that, Mr. Jones. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. I guess it must be all this traveling around the country that we do, up to Larned, over to Hayes City, all the way here to Wichita. Now, what about it? Well, it just kind of teaches a fellow about things in the world, makes him really appreciate a place like Dodge City. Oh, eat up, Chester, and let's get out of here, huh? I trust you gentlemen are enjoying your dinner. Well, if we was, we ain't now. You, uh, got something else on your mind, Morley? Why, no, Marshal, nothing new, just my continued interest in your health and welfare. Well, don't worry about it. I'm just hoping that you'll worry about it, Marshal. I told you not to get in my way. Well, now, I wouldn't want to. This is just a, a friendly reminder, Marshal, that I'm still in town, that I'll be here until after the trial is over tomorrow. You listen to me, Marley. I'll be listening tomorrow at the trial. And I just know that judge is going to set Brother Reed free. I, I feel it in my bones. He'll set him free if he thinks he's innocent, Marley. That's the only way. Oh, I know that, Marshal. I know it just like I know that Brother Reed couldn't have done that terrible thing. Just like I know that you want to go on living. Marley, I'm through warning you. Now, you stay out of my sight starting right now. I'll see you at the trial. Good day, gentlemen. I swear he's acting clear crazy about all this. It ain't your fault if that boy gets himself hung. No, it isn't, Chester, but Morley thinks it is. That's enough for him. Well, it don't have to be enough for you, Mr. Dillon. I hope you're right, Chester. <laughs> the trip for nothing, Matt. Yeah. Well, old Bowers never has been a hanging judge. I thought this case would hold up, though. I was sure the boy was guilty. I don't think my testimony was much help to you. You couldn't help that, Matt. You weren't even in on it till a week after the murder. All you did was make the arrest when we asked you to. Yeah. And he didn't have any evidence on it. I hope he didn't do it. The law says he didn't. That's all we have to worry about. There's still a woman's death unanswered for it. Sure there is. We meet again, Marshal. Stand aside, Molly. Well, now, that's not very manly of you, pushing aside a man who's come to thank you. I don't want any thanks from you. But you got thanks coming to you, Marshal Dillon. Brother Reed's a free man. And in the name of the family, I want you to know that we're grateful. Listen here, Morley. I didn't do anything for you or for your brother or for your family. That was very nice testimony, Marshal. Nothing incriminating in it at all. Yes, sir, we are all grateful. I want you to get something straight. What I told the court was just exactly what I know about this case. No more, no less. You didn't influence me, and I didn't try to influence the verdict in any way. Of course not, Marshal. Of course not. We're just glad to see that you believe in Brother Reed's innocence like we do. I don't. What? I don't believe in your brother's innocence or his guilt any more than I did before, but the judge says he's not guilty, so that's all there is to it. Now, you get out of my way. I don't take kindly... I'm through to... listening to what you take kindly... Now, Marsh... And if you know what's good for you... You'll stay out of my sight. Want me to lock him up, Matt? For disturbing the peace? You do what you want, Tom. It's your town. But I'd just let him lie there. 
It may do something for his family honor. I guess you're right, Sam. Better order some more glasses. I swear, it seems I just got some now. Well, customers ain't very gentle with them, Kitty. That's a fact. Customers aren't too gentle with anything around here. <laughs> oh, hello, Matt. Hello, Kitty. Sam. Hello, Marshal. You want to take your poison standing up or sitting down? Well, I think I'll sit down, Kitty. Yeah, pour a couple of beers, will you, Sam? Oh, sure thing. Uh, how was the trip to Wichita, Marshal? Oh, not too bad, Sam. A little dusty's so. all. Thanks, Sam. Um, you want to carry him to the table, Matt? Sure, Kitty. There we are. <laughs> ah, that's good. You look tired, Matt. Well, I spent the day helping Joe Hatch break a string of cow ponies. Those horses are bigger than I am. <laughs> and younger, too. Yeah, they sure are. Well, anything been going on around here, Kitty? No, been pretty quiet, Matt. That's good. I'd like an empty jail tonight. Well, there is one thing that I've been kind of wondering about. Oh? What's that? Well, it's that Reed Morley. Uh, the boy I took to Wichita? Yeah, he's back. You know, I'd have bet my last dollar that he wouldn't want to come back here. He didn't. What do you mean? His brother, that Clayt. Do you know him? Yeah, we've run into each other. Well, Clayt's insisting that Reed come back here to live. How do you know all this, Kitty? Well, the boy spends most of his time in here drinking, Matt. He says Clayt's making him stay in Dodge. Does he say why? Well, Reed says he has to stay here until folks stop talking about the killing and that woman till everybody's convinced of his innocence. For the family honor, huh? Yeah. How did you know? Oh, I heard about it somewhere. Well, Kitty, we better enjoy the quiet around here while we can. What do you mean, Matt? It's my guess that either that boy or his brother is going to blow up. And I don't know which would be the worse. <laughs> Dillon, burning good and bright now. Thanks, Chester. I'm sure I'm sorry it fizzled out on you that way. I could have swore I put coral oil in it just yesterday. No, that's all right, Chester. Uh, no, sir, it ain't all right at all. Fellow to order to do the job he's being paid for, to my way of thinking. Mm -hmm. well, of course, there's some jobs that's got just too many little details in them for a man to keep up with proper and all. Yeah. He might keeping out, redding up, making coffee and fetching mail, all that stuff sometimes just gets to be too much of a Chester, sure. but I, what are you muttering about? I, I, I was just saying, Mr. Dillon, that there's an awful lot for a body to do around here, keeping up the office and all. Oh? You think there's too much work to do? Do you? Well, I was just kindly thinking that... You that think you... I should hire a younger man, maybe, oh, huh? No, no, sir, Mr. Dillon, indeed not. It's, it's just Then that... why don't you shut up and let me read through these papers, please? Yes, sir. Chester, quit that rattle, and will you settle down someplace? It ain't me, Mr. Dillon. I am not doing nothing at all. All right, Chester. I guess it was the wind. No, sir, Mr. Dillon, that ain't the wind. Is it somebody working the door that way? Well, see who it is. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh. My land, Mr. Dillon, somebody laying there. Look. What? Hurt bad. Here, help me get him in, Chester. Yes, sir, I will. Oh, my land. Easy. Mm -hmm. Easy now. Mm -hmm. Hey, we'll put him down on the cot here. 
<laughs> well, Mr. Jones, it's Reed Morley. What do you suppose? I don't know, Chester. From the looks of him, he's not going to be able to tell us for a while either. Now go get Doc. <laughs> I tell you, Matt, that's about as bad a beating as a man can take. Yeah. Uh, is he going to be all right, Doc? Oh, yes, I think so, but he, he's going to be sore for a while. Awful sore. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, Doc. Looks like he's about to come, too. <laughs> I shouldn't wonder with all that water I splashed on him. There we are. Now, that'll do. I won't be needing any more hot water, Chester. You can take the rest of these things out. Okay, Doc. Mm. Can he stay here for the night, Matt? He should be able to limp away by morning. Oh, yeah, Doc, sure. Uh, can I talk to him? Oh, talk shouldn't hurt him. Just don't go slapping him on the back, though. Okay, and I'm going to go back to the office. Now, try not to have any more riots tonight, will you, Matt? I'm short on sleep. I'll try, Doc. Matt. Yeah, Doc? You better hope that this fellow was the loser in that fight. Because if he wasn't, the other man is sure to be dead. Thanks, Doc. Good night. Good night. Reed? You, you better lock that door. You're all right, Reed. Just settle down. Uh, you'll be after me. No. Huh? Who'll be after you? You've got to protect me, Marshal. Now, come on, speak up. Who's after you? Clayton. Clayton? Your brother? He's going to kill me. you got to stop it, Marshal. Well, what happened? He beat me. And he says he's going to kill me in the morning. He'll do it too, Marshal. Now, you got to stop him. He was trying to save your neck back in Wichita. Yeah. He found out. Well, what did he find out? About that woman. Oh. You killed her. He didn't want to tell him, Marshal. I bet you didn't. I was drinking. I ain't been able to do nothing but keep on drinking since I got back to Dodge. Every place I go, I see your face, except when I got drunk enough. And Clyde was making you stay here? Yeah, Marshal. Yeah, I, I, I didn't want to. I, I wanted to go anywhere, anywhere else. That's what happened tonight. Go on. I was trying to get him to say I could go away. Just move on. He was being bullheaded the way he's always been. Going on about the family name the way he does. Well, I wanted to shut him up about it. So you told him? Yeah. Yeah, I told him. I thought he'd throw me out, tell me never to come back. That's what I wanted. Looks like he did a pretty good job of it. Well, he's not finished, Marshal. He, he's coming after me. Now, you got to protect me. Now, that's where you're wrong. But, now, what do you mean? I don't have to protect you. But you don't understand, Marshal. He's crazy. He'll kill me. Now, the law's got to take care of the me. The law tried to take care of you once. Yeah, but I was acquitted. I'm all square on that, ain't I, Marshal? Yeah. All you got to worry about now is the family name. Now, you can stay here tonight, but that's all. <laughs> Chester. I land that Reed Morley back there, sure sleeping like you was dead. 
He ain't showing no sign of moving at all. He's sleeping off a bad beating. Oh, say, did you mean to leave that cell door open that way? Yeah, I meant it. He isn't a prisoner, Chester. No, I can't think of it. I guess he ain't at that. <laughs> funny thing, ain't it, Mr. Dillon? No, what's so funny? Well, the, the law can't touch a man again after it's tried him, even if he does turn out to be guilty of sin. Now, the law's stood up for a long time, Chester. I guess it knows what it's doing. Well, it still don't make no sense to me. Oh, uh, you been needing me for a little bit, Mr. Dillon? No, Chester, you can go ahead and eat. All right, sure. Ain't you coming? No, not yet. Well, all right, I won't... Oh, say, uh, you want me to close the door into the back? No, yet? never mind, Chester. I'll do it. All right. Marshal Dillon. Uh, hello, Marley. This is not an easy call for me to make. No, I guess not. I want you to know, though, Marshal, when a Marley makes a mistake, he admits it. I want to apologize to you and to the law. That's a little late for that. I know that, Marshal. I found out last night my brother did kill that woman. That's too late, too. He can't be tried again. No, Marshal. It isn't too late. I mean to see justice done, even if the law was unable to do it. Just how do you intend to do that? I will take care of my brother, Marshal, for the honor of the family. All right, you take care of him, just so you keep him away from me. Oh, he'll be away from everybody, Marshal. What do you mean? He'll be dead. Now, listen here, Morley. I don't blame you for wanting to skin him alive. I don't blame you for beating him the way you did. I got no mind to protect him, but I can't stand still for a killing. You better understand that. Did you just mention a beating? How did you know about that? I saw him. He's here, isn't he? He came to you for help. I should have known. Yeah, Clayton, he's here. I didn't expect you to hide a killer, Marshal. Stay out of there, Clayton. I'm not hiding. Not anymore, you're not. Clayton, no. No. You're a fool, Morley. You've killed him. Had to be done, Marshal. It was a matter of honor. The law will call it murder. I'm locking you up, Morley. You saying I'll stay in trial? And this time the court will make it stick. I won't hang, Marshal. There's never been a Morley hung. Don't be a fool, Morley. Drop your... Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon, I heard them shots. I would... Oh, my gracious, are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. They both dead? Yeah. It's like he was saying, the Morley is never hung. It's a matter of family honor. in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Vic Perrin, and Jack Moyles. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke.